For well over 100 years, two countries have battled for one of the most coveted prizes in the world of sport. Along the way, heroes have been found. Legends have been written, records set and broken. Now, over the next eight weeks, the attention of those two nations will again turn to the contest, the last for the millennium. It's Australia and England, and the glory of the Ashes. Welcome to the highlights of the opening day of the Ashes battle. This match being played at the Gabba in Brisbane and played in beautiful conditions. A bit of rain around the last couple of days, but today 27 degrees, hardly a cloud in the sky when the two captains went out to the centre. Tony Gregg reported that the pitch was in great shape, lovely and hard. Looked as though there'd be plenty there for the bowlers in the first session, but then it would settle down very nicely as the day went on. Australia won the toss and decided to bat. And these are the teams. First of all, the Australian side with Mark Taylor, the skipper, Michael Slater, Justin Langer batting at three, Mark Waugh and Steve Waugh, Ricky Ponting going in at six, and Ian Healy, seven. Now, there's a bit of a tail there. Michael Kasperwitz, Damian Fleming, Stuart McGill, and Glenn McGrath. So it'll be the top batsman, Mark Taylor, will be looking to, to push the runs on the board. Jason Gillespie, 12th man for Australia. Now, the England side, Michael Atherton, Mark Butcher, Nasser Hussain, Alex Stewart, the skipper, then Graham Thorpe, Mark Ramprakash, Dominic Cork, Robert Croft, Darren Goff, Alan Mullally, Angus Fraser and John Crawley, the 12th man. But we're going to join play now with the first ball. Darren Goff is the bowler. He's coming in from the Stanley Street end. Mark Taylor taking strike. Bill Laurie is your commentator and alongside him is Tony Gregg. Carried through to Stewart. Good even bounce. Slater gets it away, runs for Australia. Fraction too short, the outfield's fast. That's four. Shouts of catch it, and it's just gone by the right hand. And that can so often happen when a captain decides to split his slip cordon. Gone. This time, Mullally has got the wicket once again. Yes, well, the drinks breaks border wicket. Michael Slater going for the big drive. And that's a good catch. One for 30 at the moment, with Slater put Butchipol Mullally for 16. So it went in the air, and that's pretty good bowling. Goff has played for that. Ah! Might be just missing leg. No, umpire Francis says, you're out. And it's definitely full. Just Langer plays back, and Australia lose their second wicket. Well struck. It's gone in the air, but well over the top of the uh, point. And Mark Wall off the mark with a boundary. Well, they're shouting. Now, it's going to be a question of uh, Darrell Hare asking KT Francis. No problems there. That's three for. Yes, there's no doubt that he, he certainly wasn't saying to the umpire, I'm not sure, because he's caught that well and truly. And it all ends as Mark Waugh being out. Three for 106. Another one down. And there's a bit of lift and extra bounce for Dominic Cork. And Australia four for 106. Taylor gone. Well, I don't know what the Englishmen had in their drinks, but they better send it out to every over because it's done the trick here. Taylor is gone. It's four for 106. Fine shot. That's four. You pay. When you went off Stephen Moore, glorious cover drive. Steve Waugh, fine, that's four more, the leg glance. It's a fine knock once again from the veteran Stephen Moore. He's a tremendous player under pressure. In the air and got him, he's got him. He was not far away when he took this catch. Ricky Ponty really timed the ball, but he took the risk of hitting it in the air and he paid the price. England have been in trouble two or three times today, but they've been able to get wickets at vital times. That was one of them. Ricky Ponting's gone. Puts the man taking the catch. Caught the bowler. Stay here now five for 178. Oh, and that's his 50. He's played it away nicely on the onside. It'll be picked up on the boundary. So just a single. Stephen War just acknowledging the pause. He's come in and uh, once again he's looked pretty good. So uh, Stephen Wall 50 in the commentary box now. Ian Chappell and Jim Bowser. Nearly hasn't quite got it off the middle, but it'll get him four. Steve Waugh starting as he started his innings yesterday. 
He looked in terrific touch. No third slip. If you're not going to attack first thing in the morning, when are you going to attack? Well, Healy loves it in that area. And that's a terrific way to bring up your 50. So there shouldn't be any short runs, there shouldn't have been any, and it's a brilliant performance from Steve Waugh. Seen him play some very good innings recently. That is one of the best. Yep. That's well played. 100 for Ian Healy, his fourth in test cricket. Splendid performance. Malali continuing. Got it! Got the edge, well bowled by Al Mulally. It's been a good spell since the lunch and break. Stephen Wall falls for a magnificent 112. But full credit to Alan Mulally. Good line, movement off the seam, the genuine nick, and Stewart did the rest. And uh, he was out there for 329 minutes, and they're on their feet. What a good player. Got him, well bowled Alan Mulally. He's got four. This young man has done a great job for England. And it's a faint little nick through to the keeper, and so once again, it's the it's the Stuart Malali combination. That's uh, well bowled and unfortunate for Michael Kalf of Kasprovitz. Straight. <laughs> Chance at mid on Malali, and he's got it. So now Ian Healy has been dismissed after passing 100. Great innings for Ian Healy, 134, 8 for 420. It's gone for it. He's put it away. That's a good shot. One bounce over the rope. And again, Malala's out there. He won't get it. It's a long, long hit. I think it's over the rope, is it? No, it's four. And Mullally has done it. What a start. And we were talking before the start of this game along the lines that he was the key man. The uh, change in the style of attack left arm over the wicket would be very beneficial to England. And uh, to a certain extent, it's proved to be so. Nine for 4.45. Well, that, that really is rubbing in. Darren Goff has bowled, uh, he's probably been the best of the England bowlers and he hasn't had any luck at all. And there's 50 for Damien Fleming. Well done, his first one in Test cricket. He's hit that well. Another boundary, higher score in first class cricket for uh, Damien Fleming. Australian 9 for 480. McGrath goes, it's in the air, this will be out, Atherton's under this, this will be the end. Yes, he catches it, a wicket for Croft, all out for 485. Australia, a wonderful effort. They were four for 106. He's had a long time to wait for a wicket in international cricket. Mark Atherton takes the catch and gets off the field as quick as he can. 485, centuries to Steve War, 112, Ian Healy, 134, and then Damien Fleming, his career best, 71 not out, and the England bowlers by that time had just about had it, and the batsmen were thinking of what might have to happen when they went out for the last 20 or so overs. Uh, Darren Goff continued uh, to be unlucky, one for 135, Dominic Cork two for 98, but I was particularly pleased for Alan Mullally, who bowled well all the way through. He's the variety England need in their bowling attack, left arm over the wicket, and I was hoping he'd do well at test match level, five for 105. 40 overs and 10 maidens, a wicket for Croft and one for Fraser and Ramprakash bowled just two overs. We're going to join play now in England's reply. It's in the first over, none for none. McGrath is bowling to Mark Butcher, the left-hander. Bill Laurie is in the commentary box and with him is Ian Botham. Bit of pad or bat and it races away and that could be four. Wait for the call from up by here. I think it was a leg by. It runs on the board for England. Gabba. Gets an egg, he's gone, straight down to the side of Mark Waugh. Beautiful bowling, Atherton was squared up. It's 1 for 11, a great start for Australia. Perfect line, Randolph Stump. And that goes straight to 
to Mark War. England, not the start they wanted. One for 11. Oh, good shot again. That's very well played. That was pitched up, swinging into him. He's closed the face on that one and uh, caressed it through the onside. Just managed to get to the boundary. Beautiful shot. Fraction short. He was back quickly. Beautiful use of the feet. Oh, good shot through the covers. And what a good way to bring up a half century. That's a lovely cover drive into the fence it goes. And that'll be a confidence booster. That's well played. Fifty for my butcher. That's four more. It's all happening for England at the Gabba. And good luck to them because they've been very positive. Yeah. Got him! Got the break through the local. The front 145. A very good delivery. Good genuine nick. The end of a fine partnership. Nice. Terrific bowling, isn't it? You've got a good credit there. And it's due. Michael Peswich. Running away swingers. An angle one in the ball before. And then now two for 145. There's no shortage of excitement. Yeah. Would you believe it? You could not have uh, hit it any more accurately to the fieldsman, so he'll be feeling as sick as a dog. However, these things do happen. Kasperovitz down there made the catch, and McGill was off the mark. So the England captain is out, 3 for 168. That's an excellent shot. Better timing on this occasion from Graham Thorpe. Well, beautifully struck. And there's a test ton, the first one against Australia for Mark Butcher. Oh, it's got him! What a catch! They went into their shell, they paid the penalty, and that's a gem, that's a classic. Mark Butcher's long innings comes to an end, he's played very, very well. Mark Butcher, court and bowl, Mark War, four for 240. In the air, but uh, that's his single. So, before the tea break, Thorpe has managed to get one away, and he's got 50. Ah, well, it's taken a long time, but McGrath has finally got him on the bouncer. Here, yeah, well, Glenn McGrath's bounce is right on line. They just cramped him for room. Graham Thorpe loves the short stuff, likes to play the pull and hook, and uh, Glenn McGrath really wanted that one. He was focused this morning. He wanted that wicket, and uh, he gains a fifth wicket for Australia. And he's going to fight for 315. Nice stroke. Upfield uh, is still relatively fast, even though it was saturated, water lying all over the ground yesterday evening. And that is another bit of good thinking from Glenn McGrath and Dominic Cork uh, is the victim that's well bowled yes beautiful bowling for Dominic Cork uh, from sorry from Glenn McGrath to get rid of Dominic Cork he's very happy with that one Glenn McGrath peppered him with some short stuff <laughs> Dominic Cork was trying to get off strike and uh, couldn't get off strike with a single hit the splice the bat for the went for the hook and uh, Glenn McGrath gets Australia's six wicket England a 319 Right. That's well played. He's cut that one away down to the boundary, and that's his half century. Well, that's very well played. It's got him, got through him. Good change. Nice length. And uh, Croft, after a good innings, is gone, and England are now seven for 360. Ah! LBW. Oh. Uh, well, it's hit him on the inside of the front pad. It's not as though uh, it's hit him on the outside, so that uh, certainly could have been very close. It's given out by umpire Hare, and it's uh, now 8 for 373. Goff goes for naught. Thinking of uh, the injustice of the world, that he had 28 shouts himself and couldn't get one. 
Well, there's another one for Glenn McGrath. The next ball, Alan Mullally, first ball, a short one. Mark Ravrakash wasn't too happy with Robert Croft, and I don't think he'll be very happy with Alan Mullally. First ball, it's on 68. And one thing's for sure, that's Glenn McGrath's on a hat-trick. That's out. This is the final wicket. Yes, yeah, just catching the shoulder of the bat, Angus Fraser tried to get the hands and bat out the way. Simple catch to Mark Waugh. And six wickets to Glenn McGrath. Deserved them, bowled absolutely sensational this morning. And uh, the Australian team clapping him off. And Mark Grant for cash with 69 left stranded. 375, a deficit of 110. The Australians in the ascendancy once again. Mark Ramprakash went right through for 69 not out, but there are three ducks there. Dominic Cork, Darren Goff and Alan Mullally, a first baller, with uh, Ramprakash stranded at the other end. Angus Fraser, the last man out. Bowling figures for Australia. I thought that was a superb performance from McGrath. He was in outstanding form today. He seemed to have his rhythm right, bowled with plenty of pace and movement off the seam, and uh, he was on top of all the batsmen. Six for 85 from 34.2 overs and 11 maidens. Two wickets for Kasprovic, who bowled pretty well all the way through. Two for 82 for him, and McGill spun the ball today. That'll be significant on the final day of this match. One for 70 for him, and Mark War one for 18. We're going to join uh, the reply now, the Australian reply, with uh, Michael Slater taking strike. It's the second over, one run on the board. Dominic Cork is the bowler. And your commentators, Bill Laurie and Ian Botham. It's gone for it. It's a good result. A little bit risky. Walking over cover. That's the way Michael Slater plays. Aaron Goff with a big job here for England, the main striker. And that's a good shot. And that's a glorious shot. So Slater's intentions are clear. There's four more. It's a glorious shot. Was the attempt an in swinger to Michael Slater, drifting into his pads. And away it goes. If they keep on this right, Bill, I think it'll be spot on. I think England might be batting by uh, the start of tomorrow's play. There's four more just over Gully. There's four more. It's Mark Tow on strike. Mark Tow got him. It's bowled for a duck, a rare duck. I think it's his first ever. Duck in Test cricket in Australia for Mark Tower and Cork has done the damage with an inswinger. Mark Taylor goes for naught. <laughs> Just out of reach of, uh, well, he didn't actually reach for it, but um, it's gone out to the deep mid wicket boundary. And it's taken Michael Slater to 50 and taken Australia to an interesting position. Perfectly logical thing for them to do to start looking for victory with a lead of 110. Wait. Oh, and that's gone through. Short delivery outside off stump. Long on and dropped. Megan now is 50. Nice half century. It's played well. Just get ready in the stands. That, I want to tell you, is a very big hit. There it is. That is a brilliant hundred. Got him. Angus Fraser has caught the ball of Michael Slater, forcing on the back foot. And uh, quite rightly, he will get a big ovation here. That has been a splendid innings. Wonderful entertainment for the people who paid their money at the gate. And great stuff for the television audience. He's gone for this down the ground. Alan Mullally has made good ground to his right and takes a safe catch. His part, not quite getting out of the middle. Just a little, probably a little low on the bat. But uh, Alan Mullally takes that quite comfortably. Good innings though from Justin Rayer. Well, happy with himself getting out. He's done a pretty good job for his side. He's gone for 74. Caught the rally bowl croft. It's three for 199. Steve War has decided the best method is get out of your crease and 
try and get to it before it lands in the rough patch. Very well run. Very attacking cricket. Yes, and as it uh, was not uh, fielded by Stewart, Mark Waugh was looking for the fifth. There he is, he's declared. Well, that is a very good declaration from Mark Taylor. Three for 237. It leaves England with uh, 348 to win and 62 overs were bowled there. Slater, a wonderful knock from him, 113. And then Justin Langer chimed in very nicely, also for 74. And the War Brothers there, Mark on 27 and Steve 16. Three for 237, a challenging declaration. And uh, England's bowling, Darren Goff went for 50 off six, a wicket for Dominic Cork and only five overs for him. And a wicket each for Angus Fraser and Robert Croft. Well, now, England had to get through a very nasty period of seven overs there, and they did it satisfactorily. Atherton made 18. He was on a pair when he started. Butcher on seven. No wicket for 26. And they need 348 England's overall target. And they're none for 26 at the moment. And that's after Australia made 485. And three for 237 declared England 375. And yesterday, Michael Slater with that brilliant 113. And Lang of the 74 but particularly Slater, gave Taylor the chance to make a challenging declaration. 26 on the board for England, with Atherton 18 and Butcher 7. We're going to join play in good conditions. Uh, the pitch was in, uh, well, quite a good state, still very firm. Looked as though there might be some turn there, say for Stuart McGill and perhaps for Mark Waugh. But basically, it was still a good batting track. We're going to join it now in the second over of the day. Two runs have been added. Michael Atherton is taking strike and Glenn McGrath is the bowler. In the commentary box, Bill Laurie and Ian Chappell. Good shot. Winning the chaser. Four runs. He's a very good puller. Like he normally hits the ball to the ground, too. That was well played. Going for it. It could be out. Fleming's under. Do you get this? Yes, he does. McGrath gets him again. That's a breakthrough they needed. One for 46. On that occasion, Ben McGrath didn't so much go for the height, but he went for a bit of width. Made uh, Atherton drag it from well outside the off stump. That's why it's caught the top edge. Damien Fleming, good pair of hands, camped under it early. That's good judgment and took it very comfortably. So Glenn McGrath continues uh, his hold on the former England captain. England one for 46. What a beauty. That is a cracking stroke. Ah! It's given him. LBW. It struck Butcher on the front pad, and the umpires are always alert to whether or not it gets through. It didn't touch the front pad, went straight through and hit the back one. There's only a short distance to go there and onto the stumps. Two for 96. Yes, well bowled and well caught. Australia on fire at 3.103. And good bowling by Mark War. Skipper's gone for. Oh! Got him. That's the one they wanted. Strike the short leg off the meat of the bat. And Mark War strikes again. Quite amazing, isn't it? Really a nothing delivery. Turned away. Fine catch. But uh, I don't know. You know the guy's there. Why are you playing it? Seems so strange to me. Mark War, though, got rid of Alex Stewart and he's got rid of Graham Thorpe. He's gone for nine. It's four for 133. Oh, oh just wide of Mark War. Just tapped it away. He'll go for four, but by wasn't far from Mark War if he could catch anything. Oh, he's got in the wrong one. He didn't pick it. Can you believe that? Looking for the three for his 50. Cut against the spin and paid the penalty. I'm a little surprised that uh, Stuart McGill hasn't bowled more Rollins because uh, Nasser Hussain, I think, has a problem picking him. And I think uh, this is pretty obvious here. Nowhere oh. near it. Didn't work it out. Chopped it onto his stumps. England struggling now at five for one four eight. Short delivery and uh, hit away nicely. That was nicely timed, actually. It's much better. Yeah! 
Oh, beautiful. Beautifully bowled. He is having a great time. For a young spin bowler who's playing in only his fifth test match, that is a wonderful dismissal. He drew the batsman down, spun it past the outside edge, and Healy completed a very good stumping, but it was beautifully bowled. Yes, he's got him Fox, hasn't he? That's the leg spinner. He's already beaten him with the googly, and off go those bales. He's stranded uh, way down the pitch, and uh, it was. The over's been a good one. The googly, which he didn't pick, followed by a really good leg spinner. Ramprakash out for 14, 6 for 161. At the boundary there for Dominic Cork. One of the reasons uh, McGill is bowling so well today I think is tied up in the way he's approaching his job it's not easy for a young spin bowler everyone expects him to do well everyone's talking about oh um, is he going to do a warney and that puts a lot of pressure on him I'm impressed by the way he's been approaching his job and the umpires have decided that the light is not good enough to continue at six for 179 cork on 21 Croft on four Alex Stewart, uh, the right of that decision. It is dull and uh, it's a very tough decision for the umpires. They never came back. Play was abandoned and this is the reason it was abandoned. It was fierce stuff, I can tell you. The storm that swept through Brisbane, concentrating itself on Wool and Gabba and on the cricket ground. And uh, lightning was arcing in the stands here. It was uh, quite sensational but uh, not very pleasant. And the rain, it just threw it down. The ground was covered with water at one stage. It was just like uh, the middle of the night. And they never got back on. They were hoping at one stage they would be able to, but this is the way it finished with the England batting card, six for 179, Dominic Cork 21 and Robert Croft four, with uh, the top score there of Nasser Hussain on 47. Now the bowling figures for Australia, some significance there. McGrath continued his good form, 16 over six maidens, one for 30. And Stuart McGill, I thought he bowled very well, and uh, if England have been concentrating on leg spin, well, I can assure you they haven't mastered it yet. He turned the ball a great deal. He had his wrong and working and his top spinner. And although he's raw, he's only playing in his fifth test match. He bowled 22 overs, four maidens, and took a three for 51.